Okay, we're here at the Coast to Coast Battle in Beantown. Ran to American record holder Molly Huddle. Um, you know, probably a month into marathon training now, maybe a little less than that. Yeah, about a month. How, how much time do you take off off the Rio? We took a, about a week without workouts, mm -hmm. um, just doing mileage, mm -hmm. and then got into it. So, yeah. yeah. How, how are you feeling about it right now? Um, okay, I think October is going to be a lot harder, yeah. uh, but just kind of getting into the long runs now. I've only done like one real long one, and yeah. uh, going to do a longer tempo tomorrow, so I feel like I'm still kind of building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know the last couple of years you've sort of, sort of, you know, you've done some half marathons, so it, I guess this isn't too different, but like, you know, like how, how different is it? It is different. Yeah. Um, you know, I've only been to the track once yeah. since Rio, and I that's different for me. Mm -hmm. Everything else has been on the road and long and kind of a tempo threshold effort. Um, so that's just a different kind of, I kind of miss the track already. Uh, but I've enjoyed the long runs and kind of experimenting with those and seeing how, like, we kind of are trying to push those a little bit at the end. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, still a work in progress, still kind of feeling it out. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've trained with marathoners before, whether it be Kim or Amy over the years. Have you learned anything from, from your past experience training with them? Or yeah. is it kind of all new ground? It's new ground for me to have to do it and not to be able to choose what days I jump in with them. Because that's what it used to be. I would, I would do whatever part of their workout I wanted, kind of. Um, so to have to do the whole thing week after week is hard. Because uh, you just get that tiredness. That's new to me. Um, and then I've definitely picked their brains about like fueling and stuff like that. And just the course in general, obviously. Kim's run it like five times. I was going to say, have you practiced fueling yet, or what, what's your... A little bit, yeah. I've practiced the gels and kind of like running 5.30 pace with bottles. And it's harder than it looks. So. Where is your mileage going to be for this compared to where, you know, it would be trained for the 5K, 10K? Um, well, in the winter, I get kind of close to this. I mean, I'll hit, like, I'll go over 100 maybe one or two weeks in the winter. So this is just back-to-back, -back, like 110-ish. Um, but the next schedule's not out yet, so I'm not sure how high I'll go. But so far, that's... So <laughs> do you think you'll do any build-up or any races to kind of see where your fitness is at or any half marathons to tune up? Um, so far, the plan is to do Tufts 10K, uh, and that's just, just a race to break up the training, really. We don't... We're not in 10k shape, so. <laughs> yeah. Your uh, Shannon got your American record like last week, I think. I mean, was that part of you that's like, oh man, I just ran this really fast 10k. I could probably run that as well. Like, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would have loved to fit in a fast 5k. It's just when I committed to the marathon way back in, gosh, I think it was I don't remember, April, March, April. Um, we looked at the Diamond League schedule, and I looked at Brussels and said, I'll miss that race, and that's upsetting because <laughs> yeah. you always want to be in the diamond league final when it's in brussels uh, it's a great meet it's a great track but um yeah i committed to this a while ago knowing shannon was in great shape and even jenny was in great shape and that, that one day they would crack under 1440 and it was this year so that's where the record belongs yeah. uh, we'll see how much lower it can go <laughs> yeah i mean you're, uh, the marathon field came out the full field came out this week did you have did you look at that do you have any thoughts on that yeah, it's a stacked field. Um, four women under 220 is pretty legit. Um, it'll be, it'll be hard. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it doesn't go out extremely fast from the gun. Um, you, typically, New York does it because the course is so difficult. Yeah. But uh, it's a challenging debut for sure f in my eyes. Have <laughs> you yeah. watched you know, a bunch of Americans have debuted in New York? Where, where Shalane did, Kara did. Have you watched their racing and kind of? learned anything from that? Or? I was there in person for most of them, yeah. Um, and definitely up to speed on those results. And um, I've heard a few people say, you know, it's a hard debut, so just be prepared for that. Um. <laughs> Will you do your training mostly in Providence? Or I know you've gone to Arizona previous previously to train. Yeah, we'll stay in Providence. Um, I really like training here in the fall. And there's some hilly road loops that I think are really good for New York. And, we just didn't want to mess with altitude before a build-up because I've never done it before, like the training. So yeah, we'll just hopefully get there fresh and um, just ready to race the last 10K and hopefully it's a good experience. <laughs> Are you more eager or apprehensive or, or, ner or a mix of both? But yeah, a little bit of both. I think just because the marathon, they say you don't know if you're ready to do it until you get to the race because you don't do a workout that simulates that really. I mean, you never race. You don't do a tempo that's 26 miles long in your build-up. So, um, 
that part makes me nervous, but I'm excited just to see what I can do and experience that whole different, it's a different sport, you know, so that's always exciting to do something that new. Alright, well, yeah. looking forward to watching you race in New York. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem.